Good afternoon, boys and girls. Wait, you're here again to listen to another story? Oh, I am so happy. I'm glad you're here. Happy Monday. Um, today is May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Today I have a nonfiction book. Now, believe it or not, boys and girls, science is all around us. You don't have to sit in front of a textbook, in front of a science book to learn science. No, no, it's all around us. So um, see if you can find some of the simple machines around your house and yard. This is about wheels, levers, and pulleys. It's written by David A. Adler, illustrated by Anna Raff, and it's by Scholastic. And our title page has gears and uh, levers, wedges. So machines make work easier. Look in a mirror. Go ahead, go look in a mirror. Now smile. You are looking at a whole set of simple machines, a whole set of wedges. A wedge is thin at one end and wide at the other. It's a simple machine that helps break things apart. Now I'm gonna show you this picture of a mouth and you see the teeth inside and the teeth are biting an apple. Your teeth are wedges. When you bite into an apple, the sharp, thin end of your teeth split the apple. Your teeth change the up and down direction of your bite into a sideways force that splits the apple into pieces small enough to swallow. And there you are. Well, that's who this little guy is looking in the mirror. <laughs> an ax is also a wedge. A lumberjack drives his ax into a log. He swings his ax down and the log splits apart. The force of the lumberjack swing drives the wedge into the log and the wedge changes the downward direction of the force into a sideways force that breaks the log into smaller pieces. Now boys and girls never pick up something like this, an ax. Always have your parents do this or if they're supervising you. Now a pair of scissors is a pair of wedges that work together. Thumbtacks, pins, nails, shovels, forks, knives, and chisels are also wedges. Many boats are wedges too. The front is narrow so it can push easily through the water. And there's the boat. And there's some of these simple machines as wedges that you may have in your home. Have you ever played on a slide? Well, if you have, I'm sure you have at the playground. You played on a simple machine. Stand at the top of a slide and look down. It's a hard drop straight down, but sliding down is not hard at all. It's rather fun. A slide is an inclined plane, sometimes called a ramp. It's a flat surface with one end higher than the other. An inclined plane makes it easier to climb up and down. It, may, it makes it easier to carry things up or down. Now imagine having to lift a box loaded with bowling balls. Lifting the box would be difficult. Pushing it up a ramp would probably be easier. The more gradual the slope of the ramp, the easier the work. Of course, the more gradual the slope, the farther you have to push the box. So we can't pick that up, but if it's on a ramp, as you can see here, the cat is pushing it up the hill. An inclined plane gets the same work done with less force over a greater distance and we don't hurt our bodies by carrying something uh, too heavy for us. Roads often twist around mountains. The roads would be shorter if they went straight up, but a road that went straight up a mountain would be too steep to drive. Mountain roads are, you guessed it, inclined planes. 
The more gradual the slope of a mountain road, the easier the drive. But the more gradual the slope of a mountain road, the greater the distance you have to drive to actually reach the top. A screw is an inclined plane around a straight metal nail. It would take a great force to push a nail into a piece of wood. Turning and pushing a screw into the wood is much easier. And when you push and turn a screw, you are moving it in along a circular inclined plane. Oh, I forgot this part over here. Incline planes are used to load trucks and to make it easier for people in wheelchairs to get around. And in this case, he's loading a crate of apples and see the incline plane, his ramp. And then over here, the screw makes it much easier when we turn it into the wood instead of driving a nail in there. Have you ever played on a seesaw? If you have, you've played on a lever, another simple machine. A lever has two parts, a solid bar and a pivot. A pivot is sometimes called a fulcrum. On a seesaw, the long board with a seat at each end is the solid bar. The platform in the center doesn't move. It's the pivot, as you can see. This is the pivot and this is the bar. The person on the other end of the seesaw may weigh as much as you do or more, but with a seesaw, you can lift your friend easily. That's because a seesaw is a lever. It's a simple machine that makes lifting easier. This is the load and this is the effort. Now, boys and girls, I don't think we have a seesaw in our playground. When was the last time you were on a seesaw? Ooh, maybe that might be a good summer project. A shovel can be a lever. Find a shovel with a long handle. Take it to the sandbox or to a beach. First, load the shovel with sand. Hold both hands at the far end of the handle and lift. It's difficult. The load feels really heavy, as you can see him right there. Look at his face, he's struggling. Now leave one hand at the end of the handle and move one to the middle and lift it. The load feels lighter. Look at that. Your hand at the end of the handle is providing the lifting force. Your hand in the middle is the pivot. You're using the shovel as a lever and it's making it easier to lift the sand. See, boys and girls, and these are things that we have around our home. Have you ever tried to move something heavy? Remember the bowling balls? Okay, so look at the cat here. Those look like apples or maybe they're pears. It's difficult to push or pull a heavy box along the ground. It's the friction, the rubbing of the bottom of the box against the ground that makes moving the box so difficult. It's a lot easier to move the box if it's in a wagon. It's the wheels and axles on the wagon that make you work easier. Here we are. A wheel and axle is just a large wheel attached to a small wheel. The small wheel is the axle, as in, see the middle of the bike? A wheel and axle is a simple machine. Wheels reduce the friction. Only the very bottoms of the wheels on a wagon touch the ground. That's a lot smaller area than the bottom of the entire box, as you can see here. With less rubbing on the ground, there's less friction. A wheel and axle also multiplies the distance something turns. Ah. Have you ever been to an amusement park? I'm, I bet you, you have. Have you ever been on a Ferris wheel? Here's the Ferris wheel with each of the buckets holding people. A Ferris wheel is a good example of how wheels and axles multiply the distance something turns. The axle in the middle 
of the Ferris wheel is attached to the motor. So here is the axle. The motor supplies the power that turns the axle. The axle turns the Ferris wheel, the big wheel on the outside. The axle is just a small wheel. It doesn't make a big circle when it makes one complete turn, but the attached Ferris wheel does make a big circle, as you can see just by the look of them. Okay, this only goes around so far, but this, look at the diameter of that. Um, but the attached Ferris wheel does make a big circle. In one complete turn of a Ferris wheel, each seat on the wheel goes a long way. On a Ferris wheel, the distance the axle turns is multiplied. Look at that. Oh, that makes me want to go to an amusement park. Oh, how fun. We will soon. <laughs> a wheel and axle can also be used not to multiply the distance a wheel turns, but to multiply the force used to turn the axle. You do that every day. Every time you turn on a faucet, you are turning a wheel and axle. Look at that. Next time, don't call it a faucet. Call it a wheel and axle. The faucet knob is the wheel. It's attached to a shaft, a thin rod that turns the water on and off. That thin shaft is the axle. Turning the shaft would be very difficult. The knob is larger and easier to turn because the knob multiplies the turning force. The larger the knob, the easier it is to turn the thin shaft. Look at that. Make sure to tell your, tell your parents or, um, or grandmas and grandpas, whoever you live with, about what you've learned today and use these words. Some wheels are attached to the axle, some are not. The front wheel of a tricycle is attached to the axle. The, the axle is attached to the pedals. And you want to see a little bit closer. And what does tri mean, as in tricycle? It has three wheels. When riders turn the pedals of their tricycles, they are turning the axles that turn the front wheels. It's the front wheels that pull the tricycles forward. And the back wheels of a tricycle are not attached to the axle. They spin around it. So it's just following the force of your feet pushing the pedals. Many machines need gears to make them work. A gear is a wheel with teeth. Gears can change the speed, the power, and direction of a, of a machine's work. And you can see some gears right there. And those are the teeth they were talking about on the outside. Combine a wheel and axle with some rope and you have a pulley, another simple machine. A flagpole uses a pulley. And if you've ever watched um, uh, Mr. Jose or Mr. Edgar put up the flagpole, um, put up the flag on the flagpole or even take it down, it uses a pulley system. The pulley is at the very top of the pole. You don't have to climb up the pole to raise the flag. You just pull down on the rope and the flag goes up. The pulley at the top of the pole change the direction of your pulling force. For every foot of rope you pull down, the flag raises one foot. A flagpole uses a fixed pulley. It's fixed or attached to the top of the pole. Many curtains and window blinds also used fixed pulleys. What if you added a pulley, one that moved up and down with the flag? Now you are using two pulleys. You have to pull the rope farther to get it around both pulleys. And you have to pull it more than one foot to raise it that much. But the pulling is easier. The more pulleys you add, the less force you need. Such simple machines. Ooh, which one's this? The next time you pass a construction site, look at the cranes, the large machines used to lift heavy objects. You'll see a pulley, probably several, between the top of the crane and whatever it's lifting. With the pulleys, the motor in the crane needs less lifting power. Now see, here's our crane. You see the pulleys in our picture? And this is also has a motor attached to make it a whole lot easier for construction crews to lift those heavy beams or uh, machines. Oh, and that was it. 
I thought I had one more page. So boys and girls, a simple book about simple machines. Um, and I will put our AR reading level in the comments. I hope um, you are enjoying your distance learning as much as you can and you're giving it all you've got. Um, oh, and boys and girls, um, don't forget to um, tell your teacher this week um, about what a great job he or she is doing. They're trying hard too, just like you. Send them a line, make them a video, make them a picture. Um, there's some ideas on the library page of School Loop. Okay, enjoy your afternoon, and I'll see you tomorrow. Afternoon story time with Miss Lynn. Bye.